Hello, everybody, and welcome to Educations. It's great to be back for another season, and I am joined today by Alicia from North Carolina. Alicia, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to our viewers? Hey, guys. So I'm Alicia Ray. I am a 13-year veteran educator. I have taught fifth grade, taught that for seven and a half years, and then I went to pre-K-5 at a rural high poverty um, elementary school where I was the media coordinator. And back in, I guess it was 2016 or 17, my superintendent called me in and asked me if I'd like to pilot a position that formally merges digital learning and media coordinator into one person. So now I'm in a middle school, six, eight, um, and I work at a STEM magnet middle school. So we focus on science, technology, engineering, and math. Cool. So what yeah. was the what was the decision to say, you know, um, I'm ready to to do something besides the the typical classroom teacher move into this facilitator coordinator type of position instead? Yeah, so I love um, being with my kids. That was so hard to leave. I loved every second of being in the classroom. I just wanted more. I wanted more kids. Um, my mm -hmm. 20, 25, they, it just wasn't enough to love on just them. I guess <laughs> I wanted to love on a bunch of them. I love so, that. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Um, my first day teaching kindergarten was pretty interesting. I learned the universal we, you know, we will sit down, we will keep our <laughs> eyes on the speaker, we will have our listening ears on. I didn't know about that in fifth grade. Yeah, we we will not take a marker and color <laughs> on our neighbor, right? You know, <laughs> we will not. <laughs> so, have you been finding yourself making those connections with more students now, being able to to build that broader impact that that you wanted whenever you started it? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I love it. And what's really cool about my um, my new role is that I actually work at the middle school mm -hmm. that my elementary kids feed into. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So when um, when I got to this middle school position my eighth graders I have been with now since they were in third grade. Wow. So I've, I have some really strong relationships with those kids. And um, I told them just the other day, it's the most, this is the only year I'll ever be able to say this. My eighth graders I've known since they were eight, seventh grade since they were seven, and my sixth graders I've known since they were six. That is so, awesome. <laughs> it's cool. I love it. Yeah. So you got a lot of fancy, you got a lot of fancy words in your title too. You know, the, the lead digital learning and media innovation facilitator. I got them all there, right? You did, you did, okay. you did so all good. Right. Just wanna make sure I wrote them down right. Uh, break that down for us. What What are some of the, Ooh. what's the brass tacks behind that? Yeah, okay, so um, lead, it doesn't mean I'm the boss at all by <laughs> any means. My, my fellow media coordinators, my fellow innovation facilitators, they're amazing. I am not by any means <laughs> their boss. Um, I was just the first one. I was the pilot. I got to go through and figure out all the little bits and pieces. Um, but then digital learning, I'm a digital learning coach, which I prefer to just say I'm an instructional coach because mm -hmm. digital learning is just learning. So um, digital learning coach and I'm a media coordinator. So I work with our students. I do um, media classes once a month where we talk about research, copyright, um, we check out books, all that. So I, I do literacy. And then I also am in charge of digital learning within our school and, and just best practices instruction. So I work with our teachers as well. That's great. So what does that look like whenever you work with your teacher? We've had instructional coaches on here before and they all seem to approach their positions differently. So so what what unique things do you bring to the table? Yeah, so I'm in a really cool position where I get to co-teach with my mm -hmm. teachers. That's so, awesome. Yeah, like not only do we get to actually plan together, but we end up getting together and creating these amazing lessons. And then I get to see them through by going into their classrooms or they'll bring them to the media center, depending on how much space we need. Um, and we'll just do these killer activities, these experiences that just the experiences would blow your mind. They're just I'm so proud of my kids and my teachers. I'm so what, what would be person. what would be one of those experiences? Oh, OK. So just are give you us ready? one to start. <laughs> OK, I'll just give you one. All right. So my um, my math students, seventh and eighth grade math, they mm -hmm. were working on um, just within Common Core and uh, Math One, because we are a STEM program, we accelerate. Mm -hmm. So some of our eighth graders are taking high school courses. Wow. So these eighth graders were working on um, linear functions, quadratic functions, exponential functions. And they go in and they design a roller coaster using their, their equations to design a roller coaster. They build it in Minecraft EDU. 
and we don't have education edition. We're just okay. regular Minecraft EDU. Gotcha. So we built them in Minecraft EDU and then we have the HTC Vive. Um, and so we actually got to go into Vivecraft, pull in that world through um, just vanilla Minecraft, just the regular mm -hmm. Minecraft got to go in and actually allow the kids to sit in their carts and yes. ride the roller coasters they created. That's amazing. Mind blown, right? That, yeah, for real. What? And and so, you know, they you feel like they make these big takeaways too because like, wow, this isn't just, you know, math I'm doing for a worksheet. It's there's real world applications here that that we're applying now. That's awesome. I love that. It's incredible. It, I am seriously the luckiest person in the world. <laughs> So, um, and you know, you, you mentioned one of my, uh, you know, a game that I love to play in college whenever I was, you know, in between semesters, Minecraft in the, talking about Minecraft EDU, elementary school kids, middle school kids, what, how do you, how do you feel like they embrace that compared to, you know, any other sort of game that we bring into a classroom? Oh, they love it. Every second that, you know, I'm able to say, hey guys, we're going to get on Minecraft to do this. They get so excited. Um, my mentor, Lucas Gillespie, I've got to give him a shout out at Lucas Gillespie, G-I-L-L-I-S-P-I-E. Lucas is amazing. He's the one who brought Minecraft to our district and our kids have just, they've gravitated to it and they love it. And now they're like, hey, Mr. A, how can we do Fortnite in school? I'm, like, I'm working on it, kids. I'm working on it. Give me Some, time. Someday. <laughs> Yeah. So how do you, um, so you, you focus on, on science and math primarily, how far do they, do they usually get in science at your school? Um, our science students can take up to freshman year science, which in North Carolina is earth and environmental science. Okay. So, um, they are going, what, what's really cool is our eighth graders are actually learning the eighth grade science curriculum and earth and environmental science at the same time. We just roll it all in. So it's just one big, it's just one class. They can't, you know, it, we don't take it apart. It's right. all just woven together really seamlessly. That's great. Yeah. So, you know, within that position too, you, you spend a lot of time having to plan these awesome lessons and, you know, coaching teachers and, and go teaching with them. What are some ways that, that you're very intentional about building your relationships with all these students in your school each time that you're, that you're in a classroom with them? Yeah. So learning their names, first of all, um, that was huge. The fact that I knew about half of them because they came in from my right. elementary school, that was beneficial <laughs> because I, I could, they walk down the hall and I'd say, you know, Hey, such and such kid. And they're like, what, how do you know their name? <laughs> so I make it a point to try to learn the kids' names within the first maybe week, you know, wow. just seeing them in the hallway, giving them high fives. Um, the media center's in the front of the school. So I'm constantly in the hallway saying, Hey, what's up? Um, I also do our one-to-one -one Chromebook rollout. I'm in charge of that program. So uh -huh. I'm able to meet all the kids that way too. So yeah. they, they come to me a lot about that. <laughs> That's great. And you, you mentioned that you did some literacy work there just to kind of segue to, to another thing I wanted to look at. Yeah. This past summer you tackled I, I don't know if there are words to describe the beast that you tackled with the DBC Summer Reading Challenge that, that you went on. Can you explain that to the viewers and you know maybe just start with what is it and then we'll, we'll dive deeper into it. Okay, so um, DBC 50 Summer was this absolutely insane idea that I had. Um, the 50th book, The Edgy Ninja Mindset by Jennifer Burtis was released in, Jan in uh, June of 2018. And so I decided, looking at my big list of all the books I had, and they were stacked up on my desk, you know, a mile high, it seemed like. <laughs> I said, gosh, I've got to read these books. They were just sitting there, and I hadn't read them, but they looked so good, and, you know, Twitter. So I was like, yeah, I got, I need that book. You know what I mean? You know when you look at them, you go, I need that book. Exactly. I, I put them I in my shopping list. <laughs> yes, I needed them all, all of them. So um, at the same time, I was also feeling a little complacent in my job. I, I felt very, um, I'll be honest, I felt like I was teaching at the status quo. I was doing what to do, what I could do to get by. Um, just because, you know, we all get to that spot. It just happens. And so I really wanted a, a reason to dive into these books. I wanted a way to learn new things and get re-energized and excited. And I thought, what better way to do this? They've just hit the 50th book. I can do 50 books in a summer. Yeah, um, in the summer, right? <laughs> in the summer. So it wasn't until, um, actually, I think it was Andrew Sheros who wrote All Fours and Fives. I was talking to him one day and he said, you know, do you realize that you read 50 books in 100 days? 
So I went and looked it up and actually it was 101. Don't give me credit where it's not due. It was 50 books in 101 days. I mean, <laughs> I think we can, I think we can give some grace there. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. It was great. So um, not only did I read the books, but I took one piece out of it. One implementable action. Is that a word? I, I think, think so. so. Okay, good, good. English teachers watching the show, you can check us on that. Right? Fact check. It's okay. Um, but I, I wanted one thing I could implement out of every book throughout this year. And so I'm currently working on that. Some of them I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's January. Some of these are not going to happen. I just, you know, shoot for the moon, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so how did you plan this out thinking, you know, I have... Uh, you know, I have X number of days over summer and I have these 50 books I want to read. What's the time management like that look like? I did a lot of reading when my children went to bed. Okay. <laughs> they would go to bed. I have a five-year-old and a nine-year-old and they would go to bed around 8, 30, 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And I would be up reading till two or three in the morning Oof. and um, get up. I'm actually an 11-month employee. So I worked um, the rest of June and all of August, I just had July off. So, um, I, there was a lot of reading, yeah. <laughs> a whole lot of reading every chance I had, if there was a spare minute, I had the book open reading the next piece. i normally would carry at least two books with me in the off chance that I finished one while I was out, I would have the next one to immediately start. Nice. So did you find yourself pretty frequently reading more than one book in a day or was it usually like a day, a book? It was usually a day a book. Um, there were a couple times where I had some of the smaller books um, and some of the ones that are just very straightforward. Um, Alice Keeler's uh, 50 Things mm -hmm. and 50 Things Further. Um, let's see, Google Apps for Littles. All of these books, they're, they're very straightforward and they're very step by step. So I could fly through those. Um, but then that there were some larger ones that took me a little bit. Yeah. You know, you mentioned implementable actions out of these mm -hmm. books. What what are some big ideas that you that you've had that you've implemented this year that have been you know big successes? And you and you're like, man, I'm really glad that I read these books and yeah. I've seen this change. Yeah. So um, we have really worked on our culture of reading at my okay. school. That's been a huge piece of the puzzle this year. Um, my teachers they saw me as a technology person. They saw me as the one to go to if they wanted to implement something cool in their classroom. So the digital learning coach part I had, it was the media coordinator piece <laughs> that I really needed to work on. I wanted them to see me as a literacy expert too. So um, I would go in and I thought, you know, how am I modeling reading with these kids? Our circulation was really low at our school. How can I get my, my students reading more? So we've done several little projects with reading. We did this one really cool bulletin board where my teachers told me what their favorite book was. And um, my kids got to guess which teacher picked which favorite book. That's fun. It was really cool, um, especially when one of our male teachers who he's going to kill me when I tell the story. <laughs> uh, his favorite book is My Sister's Keeper. Okay. And my, my students were like, there's no way, no way, <laughs> no way. <laughs> Cause he is not one. He's, he's, you know, just fearsome. He's, he's uh -huh. an amazing teacher, amazing teacher, but he is not one that you would ever see reading my sister's keeper. Right. I, I wonder it, if he shed a tear though, because. Oh, it's a moving book. Book. Right. It hits you right in the feelings, right? It does. Uh -huh. It does. And so um, I ran, actually ran it as a contest because, you know, middle schoolers and um, gave them food. So whoever won got free lunch from wherever they wanted lunch from that day within a certain radius. Right. So, <laughs> awesome. so my winner ended up getting sushi. Whoa. Right? Okay. Like, what? Rural Northwest North Carolina and you want sushi? I respect that palate. <laughs> Right? <laughs> she, she was great. She was great. But yeah, it was really exciting. Um, we also have our students setting reading goals this year. So each quarter they're going in and they're setting their own goal. We don't do um, any of the quiz based programs. I just want the kids to read and just enjoy it. And so we've really seen a an exponential increase in reading this year because of it. That's awesome. Who would have thought, yeah. you know, just, just let a kid read and, and see what happens next, right? Imagine. It's imagine. Great. It's crazy. <laughs> you, you had mentioned that these books are, are really popular on Twitter. And so, uh, you know, 
we're in about a billion chats, I think, together a week. And yes. yeah, our, our featured hashtag was one that uh, I know that you like, and that's TLAP for Teach Like a Pirate. And that's yes. on Monday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern. What made you decide to get on Twitter in the first place? So my mentor, Lucas, that I spoke about earlier, he um, actually did a workshop at one of our district's PD days. And I, I was on Twitter, but I'll be real honest. I was only on Twitter because I needed the football updates in mm -hmm. church. <laughs> I'm a huge football fan and my Panthers would be playing and they'd start kickoff at one o'clock. And sometimes my preacher was a little long winded. <laughs> so I needed to know what was going on in the game. <laughs> so, but when Lucas told me, you know, hey, you can you can use Twitter for education. I thought he was crazy. So I lurked, you know, I did the standard. Mm -hmm. It seems like we all have that same story. Yep. Where we got on and we lurked on a few things. We found a few hashtags, found a few people. And then I went to my first ed camp. And I met a lady named Lisa Milstead, who's equally phenomenal. And she started telling me about Teach Like a Pirate. And I guess the rest, they say, is history. That's awesome. <laughs> and, you know, it, I think one of the best things about the about the Ed Chats that, that we're in together is that we have people from, you know, sometimes it's all over the country. A lot of times it's from all over the world well, coming together to, to share these ideas. And, and so frequently, even though we're from these different areas, there's this common, this common thread of appreciating and doing what's right for kids. And there's this universal understanding that, that we're in this, we're in this conversation to, to grow as educators. It's, you know, it's really special. And, and what's really cool is a lot of these chats, you know, some of them run along common threads, but, but there's a lot that jump to, to different ideas. You know, there's an alt ed chat, there's, uh, you know, chats for different states and education, there's chats for different grade levels, different subject areas. You know, it, it, it's really exciting. I, I think whenever you find some that you can dive into and really be like, this is, this is a home for me during this time every week, you know? Yes, absolutely. And it's the, the connections that I've been able to make with people, you know, mm -hmm. Those that are not on Twitter, just they just don't get it when I say, hey, my friend Phil, and they're like, Alicia, that's not your friend. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> Phil is my friend. <laughs> I feel like I know Phil. Yeah. I, I, this, is, this is not the Facebook, uh, this is not the right. Facebook random friending of, you know, exactly. 15 years ago. Exactly. Yes. So um, that's really, that's really cool. And I really try to get more educators involved on Twitter because I kind of feel selfish if I don't tell people about how powerful Twitter is, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's been it's a game changer. It is. Yes. Yes. I, and I can't tell you how many educators we talk to, whether they're on chats or in direct messages or whatever. And they'll, they'll tell you that Twitter literally kept them in the game. Like mm -hmm. they were ready to leave. Yeah. So it's awesome stuff. It is. Well, it is. Well, Hey Alicia, we have talked about a lot of stuff. We've talked about being the, uh, lead digital learning and media innovation facilitator, which is awesome. Got to spend some time talking about how you build relationships with your students. A lot of the awesome activities in there, like the roller coaster. We looked in at the DBC summer challenge, promoting student literacy. And then we talked about Twitter and ed chats. Part of <laughs> our time is almost up, which means it's time for our high fives. These are five questions, totally unrelated to education, just so that our viewers can get to know you a little better. You ready? Oh boy. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. First one, favorite mythical creature. Dragons. Me too. They're awesome. Yes, they mm -hmm. are. They are. I want Khaleesi's dragons. <laughs> That's who I want. <laughs> uh, two. Most recent non-ed book that you have read. Really? <laughs> okay. Uh <laughs> I know. I, I thought I've really got a stumper on one of these. <laughs> that is tough. Okay. Um let's see. I'm looking at I'm looking at my um my bookshelf over there. Let's see. Um, or you can even just say your favorite non-ed book. You know, we can we can modify it a little bit here. <laughs> that's so sweet of you. <laughs> <laughs> I um, aim the thief. Okay, the book thief. Which book? Book thief. The book thief. I, mm -hmm. I just had a Good kid book. reading that the other day, and I was talking to him about it. And it's yes. another great book. It yeah, it's great. Three favorite campfire treat. <laughs> I don't go outside. Yeah, um, me neither. <laughs> so I, I guess I'll fake it and say s'mores. Yeah, right. I don't do the great outdoors. <laughs> yeah, me neither. I do the great outdoors if I'm walking around Disney, but that's about yeah, it. Yeah, that's me too. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number four, beach or cruise? Cruise. Yeah. Definitely, because I don't do the great outdoors. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
And didn't you, did you write a blog from the cruise over the summer? I did. I did. Yeah. We went on a Disney cruise. It was spectacular. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Maybe someday I can convince LB that, you know, cruises aren't that bad and, and we can have a great time. They're right. epic. They're epic. <laughs> and then fifth one, favorite meal for dinner. Oh, the, the meal I just fixed. So we had um, Sweet Baby Ray's chicken in a crock pot mm -hmm. and macaroni and cheese. And I would have fixed deviled eggs, but I ran out of time and steamed broccoli. Ooh, that sounds good. Right? That's very filling. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually the only meal that I'm really good at cooking. So <laughs> I'll and sit on Ladies and gents. <laughs> 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 well, hey, Alicia, had a great time having you on. Any final bits of wisdom that you want to give viewers before we sign off for the day? Yes. Yeah, so I, my DBC 50 summer thing was just this insane idea. And if you have an insane idea, go for it. It's, I can't tell you how many people have sent me messages and told me how inspirational it was to them. And for me, it was just setting this ridiculous goal and seeing if I could reach it. So it's been really cool to hear that other people have been inspired by that. Um, I'd love to connect with you guys. I am at I love educating, I L U V educating on Twitter um, and on Instagram. So I'd love to connect with you guys. That's awesome. Well, hey, Alicia, again, had a great time having you on the show. Hey, if you're somebody watching the show and you want to connect with Alicia, you'll also find her Twitter handle below in the description of this video. Also, be sure to check out her blog. If you're watching this show right now and you really like what you're seeing, I hope you'll take a second to just subscribe by clicking the subscribe button right below. Also, if you are a friend or interested in being on Educations, you can very easily sign up by going to philstrunk.com slash contact. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.